Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm getting ready, doing my makeup. I thought it would be fun to just do my makeup and chit chat. Old school style, I love these types of videos. I love just getting to know each other a little bit better and glamming up. I did this very like glam, girly, pinky look. So cute and perfect for today. This conversation went in quite a few different directions. We talk about new makeup, old makeup, and then also I get pretty personal today. I'm opening up about what I'm some things that I'm working through in therapy. I'm new to therapy. I thought I'd share some things that my therapist has shared with me and that I thought would be helpful for you. Um, so yeah, we get a little personal today and talk about that kind of stuff, but it's just a good old fashioned chatty get ready with me video. And I love these, they're very old school. These are some of my favorite videos to watch. I don't really watch a lot of makeup related content anymore but I will watch a get ready with me. There's something about it, something about the conversation and just hanging out and having a good time. So I hope you guys like this. Please subscribe and let's just jump right in. I just realized my thermostat is still hanging from the ceiling back there. That's what that is. So I'm gonna start with the Lawless Set the Stage Hydrating Primer. This has been my favorite recently. Um, I do one pump for the whole face and oh, it just feels really good. It smells like skincare. And then next, I'm gonna go into the Pat McGrath Skin to Fetish Sublime Foundation, my favorite. And of course, also do the concealer. The Fox 4 brush. Let's pop this on the skin. So for Valentine's Day tonight, uh, Ruben and I are gonna cook a dinner together. Probably gonna do some steak, potatoes, green beans, chocolate covered strawberries, which is Kind of just a tradition for me. It's one of my favorite desserts. And then we're gonna go to this orchestra downtown where they play Frank Sinatra. And it's like a candlelit ambiance sort of thing. It's gonna be so romantic. I'm so excited. So I'd like to find a restaurant nearby the place so that we can get dinner beforehand because that's gonna be just a nice, really fun outing and very different. So I'm excited. And I love Frank Sinatra. He's one of my favorites, I have, I'm, I still listen to Pandora. I'm a Pandora girl. So I listen to him on Pandora all the time. Just love his music. So now with the same brush, I'm gonna go into the concealer and pop this underneath the eyes. I really wanna do just like a very romantic, rosy look today. Um, it's kind of thinking like very pillow talk inspired, like Charlotte Tilbury, but I have a new palette from NARS that I wanna use, so excited about that um so that kind of gets me on the de-influencing topic i think for, i think it's funny that it's like a trend but i love it you guys know i love using all of the same stuff over and over and over again and continuing to try to like buy new things and keep up with the trends and use the newest and greatest thing what well, was very stressful as a creator because i always felt like as soon as i would put out something new i would always feel the pressure to buy the latest greatest thing like okay got that new palette that tutorial's up let's move on what's new and i never got a chance to really use products and so the last couple years i i've decluttered my makeup so many times and gotten rid of so many things and now i'm ready for it again like i have two of those alex drawer things from ikea and they're filled, but they're comfortably filled, but I kind of wanna like break it down to just one um, because even that's a lot of makeup. I'm no longer a working active makeup artist. I used to be, and so I used to need a ton of makeup and that was always a plus to this being my job was that when I was an active makeup artist, I had a plethora of options, a plethora of things for different skin tones and everything, but like I haven't been a working makeup artist in like at least seven years. So all of that stuff isn't necessary for me to own. I don't need a hundred different eyeshadow palettes. I don't need a hundred different foundations. All that stuff is gonna go bad too. So um, I always try to donate and stuff, but also like I have felt the pressure in the past to just show new things because that was just the industry. And now it's just changed so much over the last few years, especially in 2020. I feel like a lot of things changed then, but then also just makeup trends have changed where like, I feel like less people are doing like very dramatic, colorful makeup or at least less often. So I don't know. And I, I think that it's gonna ebb and flow. I think that it's gonna go in waves and there might be a time where like, new, new, new is popular again, but I like where we're at right now, especially for me, for where I'm at, at in my life, I think that everybody is kind of like going with that flow as well, where we just love to use the products that we enjoy. By the way, I'm also trying to film a reel for Instagram, and I used to do this all the time. I could multitask and chit chat and then break and do 
shots for uh, Instagram. And I've just gotten out of the swing of doing that. And so it's very, I'm, I'm struggling. <laughs> I'm trying to do two things at once. And um, it's interesting. <laughs> okay, anyways. I am so excited for this contour product. This used to be an old favorite of mine. It blew up on TikTok and then you couldn't get it anymore. Um, I got my hands on it. It's the contour wand from Charlotte Tilbury in light medium. I'm obsessed with this. It has this little like sponge here. From what I remember in the past, when you're done with it, you wanna make sure you close it because it will leak out unless they fixed that. Maybe that's why it was out of stock. Maybe they fixed that because, um, but I can't imagine. I mean, it makes sense science wise. Like if you leave it open, it's just going to leak out because of the kind of product that it is. But, um, this just gives such a beautiful natural contour and I'm obsessed with it. So I'm so glad I got my hands on it. I believe the only place that I could find it in stock was Nordstrom. So I will link it down below if it's still in stock. Um, because it is amazing. And then I just used the Smith 157 brush to blend this out. It's just like this angled wedge shape. Blending it out with this brush quickly before it dries. How beautiful and natural that looks. It looks very cool toned when I first place it on my skin, but then as I'm blending it out, it kind of just warms up a little bit. Like the warmth comes out of it and then it looks so natural. It's like a nice neutral color, not too cool toned and not too warm. And then because my hands are really warm, I'm gonna go in and use my fingers to blend this in. You don't wanna do it when your hands are cold because you want the warmth from your fingers to just kind of like melt the product in and it will help blend. I feel like I have a harder time when my hands are cold and I'd prefer like another tool to do this. And then, for my lips and look at how natural that looks i feel like ah uh, it's just such a good product and i don't know if they just like reformulated it or if it really was that good even when i was using it before because i really did like it when i was using it before but i don't remember liking it this much and it working with my skin this much i think what's unique about it is that it kind of blends into a moussey powder um where most other creams still feel really emollient and creamy which if you have if dry or, or oily skin i think that you would like either one it kind of just depends it comes down to preference really um but i feel like with my skin type it just works really well and i love it like i think it works with like just my skin and the color of my hair i know that might sound silly but just the tones that it's giving is just working really well for me oh i did want to powder but i want to use a new blush i think i'm gonna powder first though i'm gonna go into the laura mercier translucent setting powder and set the skin before i go in with my cream blush just so everything's nice and set under the eyes. I'm just lightly gonna bring this everywhere. So, fun stuff, cause it's kind of just like, since we're just hanging out and chatting, a um, couple of little life updates. Well, not really a couple, just one main life update. Well, as you guys know, I had quite a difficult year last year. So I decided that it was time because all of the things that I struggled with last year are still just kind of like tiptoeing at my shoulders, just kind of like, hey, I'm still here. I haven't gone away. And so I'm just trying really hard to work through everything and, um, just focus a lot on like my brain health as long as well as like the rest of my health and just be like all encompassing healthy. So I started therapy and I've gone four times so far and I've enjoyed it. Um, really quick, I'm gonna go into the Filmstar Bronze and Glow palette from Charlotte Tilbury. I'm gonna use the bronzer and the highlighter. I did try BetterHelp before. So I highly recommend if you're looking for a therapist because I didn't realize that finding a good therapist was like finding a spouse. <laughs> you wanna make sure that you actually respect them and respect their advice. You want to make sure it's someone that you want to be getting advice from. Uh, you want to feel comfortable with them. Like you can open up and tell them even the most embarrassing feelings. You know, you want, it, it should be a good fit. And I think you know in your soul if it's a good fit. So, uh, so finding a therapist was extremely difficult because I went to therapy when I was a kid, but I haven't gone since like as an adult. So finding a therapist was like, well, where do I go? What do I do? So I highly recommend Psychology Today. I believe that's the website and you can put in all of your special 
specifications that you want. You can specify if you want them to be male, female, if you want like a certain faith based therapy or you just want them to have that as their faith, you can click that. You can like the certain types of therapy that you're looking for and specify that like you want your therapist to be like certified in XYZ areas, whatever. You can really customize it, but I cannot stress enough. They have to be in your state. I'll get to that. Apparently it's well known. I had no idea. I'll get to why. At first I was a little embarrassed that I didn't know it, but I'm like, how was I supposed to know? So I'll get to that in a second. But I decided, you know what? Let's do better help because everybody talks about it. Everybody, like everybody and their mom has a better help sponsorship. And so I was like, okay, let me do that. I used a discount code from like an influencer that I was following that had recommended it. Biggest waste of money. I, listen, this was just my experience, but I have heard other stories that are like 10 times worse than mine. It was so expensive. The way that they list out like the pros and cons of like better help first regular in-person therapy, some of the stuff just like isn't like an adequate uh, pro and con checklist. Like they say things that better help has that like your in-person therapist doesn't have. And it's like actually most in-person therapists that I've come across actually offer everything that better help does. So just keep that in mind. Um, so better help works like a subscription. You pay monthly and then you get, I think it was one 30 minute session per week where you can talk virtually with a therapist. And then throughout the week, you could just like message them whenever. I felt like I just didn't really want the messaging. I felt like that was just like a little too much for me personally. Everybody's different. Everybody needs different things. Um, and I also felt like the 30 minute video chat was like, well, that's not enough because I feel like by the time 30 minutes goes, I'm finally feeling comfortable enough to open up about things. Cause otherwise I feel like it's like on a time crunch, like, okay, one, two, three, go. Let's talk about your trauma. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then how do you wrap that up? That's a lot to go through emotionally in such a short amount of time. In my opinion, personally, I get that everybody's different and thing like so many people really do love better help. Um, so the first session I have is with this girl and cause I requested a woman, I just feel more comfortable talking with a woman. She showed up. 30 minutes late, first of all, didn't even apologize, just like, and, and didn't even say anything until 10 minutes later, like till I was waiting for 10 minutes. And she was like, hey, I'm with another client, be, be there soon. So she hops on, literally looked like she had just woken up. And this was at nighttime, like five o'clock at night when we had this meeting. And, but then part of me was like, you know, that doesn't bother me because she's chill, you know? Like I'm, I'm chill, but like, I kind of got dressed up for this. <laughs> but whatever. Um, and that again, like that's a personal thing. Everybody, I, I, it just kind of added to like the, oh uh, yeah, we weren't a good fit. Cause she could be a good fit for someone else. But she had, she gave the vibe that she had not read anything about me until sitting down to talk to me right then and there. She was like looking kind of like off like this at her computer. Cause you could see the computer was like lighting up her face. She's like, okay, so it says here and like would take forever to find the information. Like she had no idea anything about me cause I had to fill out a lot of information. So we went through just like all of the information that I had already pre-provided and then she she kind of just like jumped like into the deep end into like stuff and like really started like going down the rabbit hole with me without much um without much warm up you know just like just got right into it and was like almost like checking off boxes it felt like um like this is what I do with a client and so it was very uncomfortable because then I was sharing very vulnerable things thoughts and feelings and I felt like the things that I was sharing like weren't serious enough for her, which I've been through some shit, but I'm not about to like bring up major traumas in a first 30 minute video session with somebody that doesn't really seem like they wanna be there. So the things that I, I started with very lighthearted stuff and she was just kind of like, okay, like just very whatever. Then at the end, she told me that she was nine months pregnant about to give birth congratulated her, very exciting. But then she said, so if I don't get back to your messages, it's because I've given birth, but no one's taking over. It's just, if I don't get back to you, that's why. And so it was kind of like, okay, so now I'm gonna be paying this money for this monthly subscription for somebody who's not actually gonna be my therapist. So, I didn't sign back up with her at the end. I didn't even give her a bad rating because I feel like a lot of things are just very personal. I don't even know if she did anything wrong. Like she, we just weren't a good fit. We weren't vibing. So I didn't book again with her and I just tried to find somebody else. And I didn't realize that 
you can't pick, or at least I couldn't figure out a way to pick my therapist. I couldn't search through a list. That's a lie. I found a list of therapists in Indiana, but there was, I think, 10 total, and the majority of them were men. So it was frustrating because I felt like I couldn't find somebody that I knew I was gonna vibe with. So they just kept reassigning me to somebody else, and I tried to get into contact with BetterHelp. Nobody messaged me back. I couldn't get into contact with anybody. So I just canceled my subscription, and I never did any more virtual sessions because it was like, I just, this, I'm not gonna, it, it's a lot to go through things. Um, like emotionally, it's a lot to open up and share things, especially with me, something that I've noticed is I have a hard time sharing my feelings in general. I am, I'm learning that that is how I protect myself. I don't like to open up. I like to just stay very much in my own box. And to me, I'm being strong, but I'm learning that it's actually more strong to share feelings to share your feelings and to cry and to all those things. And I I have a wall up for barely anybody to get into. So for me to open up is a lot. And so I didn't wanna just keep doing that every time to find a new therapist. It That would have been grueling. I would have preferred to just cancel the membership. So that's what I did. Um, so for me, it was not my favorite. So now, unfortunately, every time I hear a better help, ad i'm like i just think about that and i'm like oh it was not for me hopefully though I, and you know i know some people have a really good time with better help but i think like you just have to have a therapist that like you vibe with and I, that is really important it was something that i didn't think and just didn't think about you know okay i'm gonna go into this nars orgasm multiple i've actually never used these i'm gonna use it like a cream blush and i'm gonna apply it with the hollywood complexion brush from charlotte tilbury just pop it right here on the cheeks. Oh, that is really pretty. So then I went on psychology today and I went on the hunt for the right therapist. I found the perfect match. She, everything about her was just warm and inviting and she had a little intro video on her page on, on psychology today, which if you're a therapist and you're on there, that was such a good um, thing for me as a, as a which, am I a client? <laughs> Uh, as a person looking to go to therapy uh, because then I could get to just feel your feel her vibe I could see like she just gave me a very warm pleasant feel she checked off all the boxes with everything else that I was looking for so she also offered a 15 minute intro call we had that and I felt like I could just open up I loved the way that she received the information just everything about her was amazing she's from Tennessee <laughs> and she's only licensed in Tennessee. And I, like I, that makes sense when you think about like the way that you're like a license works and whatever. Um, I just had not thought about that. And then what else? The, online it says they offer telehealth. So I just thought that didn't really matter. Like I figured, well, if I'm in Indiana, I can just like zoom you. That's what I was thinking. Um, and that is mainly for, uh, you, have, you still have to live in the same state, so. I had no idea. So she couldn't be my therapist, unfortunately. Um, and she was so kind about it too, but I just kind of felt like, okay, this blush is not doing anything for me. Um, I just felt like, now what? It, like it was just so hard to find somebody that I was gonna really click with. Um, this top is just like, my my titties are just out. No, I'm not pregnant. Um, anytime my boobs get big, everyone's like, oh my God, are you pregnant? I am gonna go into a blush. I think I'm gonna grab peaches from MAC, one of my favorites. Oops, wrong one. Oh, that's so cute. So yeah, that was in November and I decided to take a break from looking for a therapist because it was Christmas time and I was just like already like emotionally tapped like I can't handle this right now um so I just kind of forgot about it and then in the new year I was like all right I'm ready to look again <laughs> ready to go on the hunt and find somebody the other thing I totally forgot about this everywhere around here where I live is like booked so if I wanted to go in person I was on waiting lists for other places and that was just to get assigned with somebody there too um so yeah I I just 
just felt like it was just this never ending process and getting let down and it just being really difficult. And I'm realizing like that's kind of a system that could maybe use a little TLC just in general, like the way that the system works and like how to find a therapist. Anyways, I went on the hunt on psychology today again and I found somebody nearby in my town and she had available available and she had availability which was huge um so i started seeing her and thank god it's we're a great match we everything has been going well so i just wanted to share that little tidbit um that's something that i've been doing the last month and um i'm excited to just keep learning more and just learning more about why I am the way that I am and how past experiences show up with me now with how I deal with things. And I've already learned so much. Um, I've brought on the last session, I brought up work because that was something that um, I would like some guidance with because I have just with this job, there's a lot of, you know, with social media, there's a lot of like comparison that can come up. And sometimes I'm like, fine, like that shit doesn't even bother me, but it kind of sneaks back up every now and then. And so it's hard. It's something that I just realized over the last decade is something that I'm going to continuously deal with and just how to manage those feelings, deal with them when they come up and how can I also prevent them from happening? and things like that. Also just like anybody that owns their own business, just like what, or even working from home, what that looks like that, that um, brings another set of obstacles. Also how to set boundaries with work and prioritizing work, prioritizing a personal life and finding a balance between that because that can be very difficult. Sometimes it's like, I feel like I don't have a social life and then sometimes I feel like my job is disrespected f from others because everybody, everyone in my life like knows I work from home, I set my own schedule um, and I think content creating seems easy. Um, so sometimes people don't understand when I do have work to do and I can't do something, like I've had people be like, well, why can't you just take off? And so just kind of learning how to navigate all of that um, or just have some guidance. Anyways, one of the things that she taught me at the last session, which I wanted to share because it was just really interesting and all week it has helped me. <laughs> so I want to share. So she said in life, the majority of the time, no matter what our careers are, the majority of the things that we do are not things that like we have to do no matter what. Obviously those things exist and there are things that we have to do, but, oh, did you hear my stomach? It's time for lunch. Um, but there's a lot of things that are just like want to do or you prefer to do them. So she said to me this week, try to, when I'm like looking at my schedule of what has to be done this week, and in the moment, like instead of, you know how that people say like, I have to go to the gym versus I get to go to the gym. It's not necessarily that verbiage, but it's I prefer saying like, oh, I'm, I prefer to go to the gym today. And it kind of gets you disconnected from like, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. And like checking off your list as if they're tasks, it makes it, it has made it more enjoyable. Like I, when I say, oh, I prefer to do this, it reminds me that, oh yeah, I'm doing this because this is past me has wrote down this task as something that she wanted to do. And now present me doesn't have the motivation, but present me is now remembering that past me preferred to do that. And it reminds me, yes, this is a preferred experience that I want. So it's just kind of helped me to have, um, just to be softer with myself, to be more kind. Yeah, just overall, just softer. And that's how she explained it too. She's like, it's not like you're doing anything different other than the way that you're communicating with yourself. And I was like, that's very helpful. And it sounded very simple and it is very simple. And as I've been doing that this week, I've just felt overall more pleasant and less stressed. Um, I was explaining to her how I can tend to go from one extreme to the other, either super, super motivated on schedule, whatever, whatever. And then if a wrench gets put into my 
daily schedule or my plans, I feel like, oh my God, everything's ruined. When in reality, no, it's not. <laughs> we can just shift and pivot and I have a hard time doing that. So this is also something that um, kind of helps with that as well. So yeah, I'm just, I'm learning a lot from it. I'm feeling excited about like just learning more about me and why I am the way that I am and how I can just show up and be the best version of myself for everybody in my life. It's just been, it's been good. And I've, I've felt a little bit lighter the first two weeks though, because you have to like fill out forms and kind of talk about all of the reasons why, why you're there because I don't like to share my feelings. Um, and we were talking about some very heavy topics. I keep it, I keep it together. Right. So I say something very traumatic and then I'm like, yeah. And she's like, oh, like, you know, being very like, nice and like showing empathy and i'm just like a robot like i do not deal with my feelings for two weeks i had this like lump in my throat like literally felt like there was a golf ball just sitting not like anything you could visually see and it didn't feel like a sore throat it just felt like when you're about to cry but you're holding it in that's what it felt like and i whew, like i could not it was so uncomfortable. It's like when you have a minor headache and you keep feeling it, I could not get it to go away. It was the worst. Um, finally, I had to let myself just like ball my eyes out to be able to process those emotions because I just keep burying emotions. Um, and I need to remind myself that like crying is good and crying doesn't make you meek and crying doesn't make you weak. It, um, it's actually strong to like process your emotions and yeah so i'm learning a lot it's only been four weeks and i'm excited for what's next and i just thought that i would share some of that because it's been really helpful for me and i hope that some of that is helpful helpful for you oh my gosh why can i not close this i'm now gonna go into this highlighter pop that on my cheeks i am almost done with the paris apartment that will be the next books and makeup looks video. I'm actually gonna film it tomorrow because I've got like just a little sliver left of the book. I will get better at the schedule so that you guys can know ahead of time. Um, check the comments of the books and makeup looks video that you're watching because then the next book, I will comment it and pin it so you can see it right away. I did do that with this one, but I forgot to like reveal it ahead of time like in a post on Instagram and stuff like that. So, okay, why is my blush just like non-existent today? Okay, I'm gonna do my eyebrows really quick. I've got the Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit, the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Pen in Ash Brown, and then, oop, and then the Merit Brown Brow Gel. done check out the sunlight it was supposed to be rainy all day and it's been pretty gloomy but randomly the sun just peeks out it's a vibe by the way we had two days in a row where it was like 50 degrees here in february give it to me this is what i'm talking about even if we get snow all through march just this little glimpse of spring just gives me life i think if you live in the midwest um or any sort sort of climate that's like this I think you agree because <laughs> we're all just kind of like, wow, I'm feeling amazing. Um, I'm going to prime my eyeballs with the Painterly Paint Pot. Ooh, I need a brush. This works. I have just been a new woman with these nails. These, like the French manicure, I just feel like that bitch. I feel like all that in a bag of chips. I, I just love it. It's my new thing. Um, I'm gonna go into this new NARS Orgasm palette. Um, it's called Orgasm Rising. Um, oh my gosh, I should have saved this for my Paris video. Maybe I'll use it in that because um, if you've read the book, you'll know why. So yeah, one thing I'm finding is with the books and makeup looks series, now that I'm just like not as into trying different makeup looks, I'm like, well now we gotta step out of our comfort zone and do new looks so that it's, interesting you know you want to watch someone you don't want to watch me do the same no makeup makeup look in every single video so i've gotta get some <laughs> inspiration 
so I, I've been looking on Pinterest just for different look ideas and while still also staying with the vibe that I like with makeup too I don't want to completely change it and go back to the way that I used to do makeup all the time because I just don't like wearing my makeup like that anymore so I don't know just trying to find a balance between like this is very much me and my style but also like trying new things and doing fun looks for the videos you know because it's not necessarily a tutorial for you to like try to replicate and me teach it's more like this is fun you know and if you want to replicate it cool you know i don't know so i'm trying to just think of different ideas but i also get inspired by the book so like the look that I have in mind for the next one, I do have some inspiration for it, so that works out. But I'm thinking for each one, I want to get inspired either by the story, by a character, by the scenery, or even by the book cover itself. So I tried to do that with Daisy Jones and the Six, but it ended up coming out a little bit more natural than I should have done. I wanted to do like a very cut crease type of thing, but I didn't, it didn't come out that way. So someone in the comments was like, you should do something inspired by the book. And I was like, oh, I tried to do that. And that didn't, it clearly didn't come through. So um, yeah, okay. This is a really pretty brown. It's like a rosy toned brown. So pretty. Let's do a little bit of this brown here. I am grabbing a little bit of this color from this Anastasia palette. This is the Primrose palette. I just wanted a little bit of a rosy matte shade in here to add in. Okay, back into the Orgasm palette. I'm gonna grab the center shade, mix it with this one. Just pop it on the lid. I love how this is looking. It's turning out like just very rosy, purpley, but neutral too. I'm gonna use my face highlighter to highlight my brows and my inner corners of my eyes. Okay, I think my eyes are done. I'm gonna use the Lash Paradise Mascara from L'Oreal. My lashes are on. I applied these beautiful lashes from Velour. They're in the style Soulmate, which, how perfect. Today is Valentine's Day. I didn't even plan that, but these were the perfect style. They kind of wisp out, but they're like, minimal but like flirty and just oh, they're so beautiful i love them um for my lips i'm gonna go in with the pillow talk duo this is the lip liner and the lipstick from charlotte tilbury this is what the color looks like so i'm gonna line my lips overline them fill them in and then add the lipstick it has been 500 years to the day <laughs> since i've done this lip combo and it's so beautiful it's so flirty and girly and just feminine. I love this color. It's so beautiful and it's neutral at the same time. So it's pink without being like overboard. I think I wanna add a little bit of a gloss. This is from Jaclyn Cosmetics and this is in Bubble Drip. I keep doing this, but like the focus on this camera is really good. Um, there it is. This is in Bubble Drip. So I'm gonna use this and top the lip. And then finally, before we're done, I'm just gonna add a little bit more blush because I feel like it disappeared. So I'm gonna, oh, I'm just gonna mix, um, I think this little pinky color into this just to add just a little, just some more pink in here. I cannot with my boobies anymore. I just, fun story, growing up, I was a part of the little bitty titty committee and all I wanted was a boob job. I told myself when I'm 18, I'm gonna get a boob job. I never did, thank God, because now that I'm older, I hate having big boobs. All I want is for my boobies to go back down to the size that they were when I was like 21 years old, just like a nice B cup. I just can't, they're sweaty, they're in my face, they're saggy, I just want them to fuck off. I'm down with like a little cleavage, but like this is just overwhelming. I'm just someone that's not comfortable with my boobies just like being out and about. Like nothing wrong with that. Love it on other people. Um, for me personally, I just don't wanna show my tits. Anyways, on that note, this is the final look. I feel so pretty today. This is such a glam 
feminine Valentine's Day sort of look. I love everything about it. It's just very Valentine's Day y. I love it. This might be like a new go to look of mine, especially the lip. You know what? I have been in not a rut with my lipstick because I love the lip combos that I do, but I do the same ones all the time. And I know I just talked about like using all the same products and enjoying them and stuff, but they're. I do want some options with my lips where like this is still very neutral, but it's pink and I really, really like it. I just forgot that it existed. So um, that is it for this video. Thank you for hanging out with hanging. Sometimes I talk so fast, all my words blend together and I'm like, bitch, what did you just say? Thank you for hanging out with me today and taking time to watch this. I hope you enjoyed. If you want more get ready with me videos, let me know. I'm possibly thinking of doing a get ready with me video and doing like that bronzy look that I wore in my last video. I post between one and three videos every week. So subscribe so that you don't miss them. And thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you soon.